Hello, today we're looking at the Kansas Journey, Chapter 6. It's called Welcome to Kansas, Let Her Light Shine. And let's see here. The time this chapter covers is 1840 to 1895. Here is the list of people that you'll learn about in this chapter. Here are some places to locate in Kansas and sometimes outside of Kansas. Whoops. Here's a caption. Trees were scarce in parts of Kansas. Homesteaders built houses out of materials they could find. This photograph, taken in Ford County around 1890, shows a family living in a dugout. The interior of the dugout shows all of the family's possessions brought from the east. So you can see this picture up here, the family standing out in front. It's not quite a log cabin because it's dug out and there's dirt around the sides and on the top. But you can see here are their possessions that they brought from out east to come settle in Kansas with. Here's the chapter six vocabulary. Words to understand, barbed wire, bigotry, Chain migration, class system, communal, depression, draft, dugout, emancipation, famine, irrigation, pacifist, sections, sod house, tenant. You can see the timeline down at the bottom here. Homestead Act provides opportunity for Kansas settlers to get land in Kansas. Civil War comes to an end. The first Swedish agricultural company of McPherson County is organized. Wakefield is an English settlement. Silkville is a French cooperative settlement. George Grant establishes the community of Victoria. The Mennonites send an official committee to study the settlement in Kansas. African Americans establish the first series of colonies in Kansas. Grasshoppers invade the Great Plains. The first large group of Germans from Russia arrive in western Kansas. African Americans establish the community of Nicodemus. Exodusters come to Kansas. Runny Mead is established to attract the sons of wealthy Englishmen. We see um, a broadside here. It says prepare to meet us at uh, Chetopa. I don't know how to say it. It's an Indian word. Kansas. A large area of the beautiful Indian territory is open to homesteaders. It says... Um, broadsides advertise the availability of Indian lands to settlers. Chetopia, I don't know how to say it again, is uh, in the southeast corner of the state. The broadside claims the lands were bought by a treaty with the Ch Creeks, Seminoles, Choctaws, and Chickasaws. American Indians often had no choice but to sign the treaties with the U.S. government. This little map down here says most American Indians were forced off their lands in Kansas. After the Civil War, only four reservations remained in Kansas. Welcome to Kansas. After the Civil War, it seems like everyone wanted to come to Kansas, and almost everyone was welcome. Kansas opened its lands to settlers from the East and immigrants from foreign countries. The exception was American Indians who were pushed out of, to make way for new farms and growing communities. Years before, Stephen Long had labeled Kansas the Great Desert. This image was supported when many settlers in Kansas Territory struggled with the lack of rainfall. But the drought was soon over. When living space in the east became more and more crowded, the appeal of Kansas grew. The Junction City newspaper, The Union, wrote on April 29, 1865, the idea that the central and western portions of the state is a desert is exploded. The early and later rains on the extreme headwaters of the Kansas River, the fields of wheat and corn and luxuriant grapes, 
show this idea to be a false one. Tens of thousands of settlers can find choice lands and homes in central and western Kansas. The field is wide and inviting, and there is nothing in the way. Let our light shine. After the Civil War, the population of Kansas increased dramatically. Most of the settlers moved from other states like Ohio, Illinois, and Indiana. Kansas did more than welcome its new settlers. Our government and business businesses recruited many new residents to the state. The state commissioner of immigration asked Kansans to encourage others to move here. He said it would not be characteristic for Kansas to be hid under a bushel. Let us see that her light shall shine. The federal government also did its part to attract new settlers to Kansas. New legislation allowed individuals and families to obtain land at little or no cost. The U.S. government's encouragement of the railroad industry also resulted in increased settlement in Kansas. The Homestead Act Horace Greeley, a newspaper man in the East, advised, Go West, young man, go West. After the Civil War, the West became a symbol of new opportunities. The Homestead Act nurtured the idea of land ownership. It successfully motivated thousands of people to move to Kansas. The requirements to get land seemed simple enough. Any individual over the age of 21 could claim land up to 160 acres of public land. The homesteader had to be a citizen of the United States or intend to become one. In order to obtain the land, settlers had to pay a $10 fee as well as live on the cult and cultivate the land. If, after five years, a homesteader could show improvements to the claim, then he or she would be given clear title. If the settler wanted to buy the land before the five years were up, the price was $1.25 per acre. For those who were successful, the Homestead Act offered great opportunities. States like Kansas saw a dramatic increase in population when land became available to homesteaders. Tenant farming. The Homestead Act encouraged the small family farmer. Although the land was free, starting a farm was not free. A successful homesteader needed between $500 and $1,000 to start the farm. This was a lot of money. Many settlers came to Kansas with far less. If a homesteader had a difficult first year, he or she might be wiped out almost immediately. When settlers failed, they could either go back home or become tenant farmers. A tenant farmer cultivated someone else's land as a renter. By 1890, almost one-third of Kansas farms were being run by tenant farmers. Some became tenant farmers first by choice, believing that it would give them opportunities to homestead later. Others, other farmers found tenant farming as a last option when their homesteads failed. Here's a picture here. The well-known Civil War photographer Alexander Gardner was hired to be the official photographer of the Union Pacific Eastern Division Railroad. Gardner took this photograph at a Kansas ranch on Clear Creek in 1867. Kansas population growth. What was the percentage of population growth from 1860 to 1890? 1890, around 100,000 people lived in Kansas. 1870, about 360,000 people lived in Kansas. 1880, just shy of 1 million people lived in Kansas. 1890, 1 1.4 million people lived in Kansas.